in Māori we have a word whenua, whenua which we use for the land and whenua that we call our babies placentas, um, which obviously um, a, a female body forms from scratch. Um, and they're called the exact same things because they're seen to do... So everything that a placenta does for the baby, the land does for us and the rest of the planet. So um, it's the same. We are the same. So when we first started, what we used to do, because that was all gorse, mm. you know, it was just sick with gorse. I think if you look at the photos before we started, it was just really bad gorse. Mm. So what we'd do is we'd cut tracks into the gorse, yes. cut out a clearing and then plant a tree in there. Mm. And so the gorse acted like a nursery. Mm. And then as the tree grew up, and went past the gorse and then spread, that's what killed the gorse. You can see on the top there, on that ridge up there, yeah. see where the gorse is? Ah, oh, on the left side. Yeah, so it was like that all the way through, but you oh. can see the little trees starting to poke up through there now. Yes. So those are all south sowing seeds now. Mm. So the birds go and put them there. Yeah. And that, that, in another 10 years, that gorse will be gone. Oh. And there'll be bush up there. So yes. Yeah. Wow. So did you help out with the cutting? Oh yeah. Oh, we all we all did. Back in those days, we all gave a hand with um, getting the bush in. Mm. Yeah.
<laughs> Did you also plant the ferns? Um, no, they've all popped up on their own. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, they're often, that particular species, Marmaku, um, they're often among the first to establish on their own because, you know, the spores can blow for miles. In mm. fact, that particular species is believed to have blown across from Tasmania thousands of wow. years ago. The spores just get caught in the wind. Yeah. And, yeah. And you can see how long the fronds of like they'll grow up to four meters long or something, mm. and each one will be just throwing out hundreds of spores. That's a lovely day. How are you going? Good. Good. What are you guys up to? We're just doing some recordings. Oh yeah. Sweet. Come on, dog. Come on. Come on. Come on. What we like to do, especially when we pick rongoa, we so it's like a marae. A forest is the great domain of Tani, a eh? Tani Mahuta, the god of the forest. That's his house, just like this house is my house. And um, you you need to be invited in. So um, when you're picking rongoa, you just stand at the mouth of the forest. And I remember the first time we did it, I was with a wahine, beautiful older wahine Māori. And she just kind of stood there and I was going, I was quite a bit younger, and I was going, what are you doing? <laughs> and then all of a sudden she started walking and picking her rongoa off 
the branches and I thought what was that about and she goes did you see that tui on the branch and I said yep and the tui was pacing back and forth on this branch like this and um, the tui was speaking you've heard a tui speak eh? so you know the the beautiful sounds of a tui and it was pacing back and forth as if it was an old koroa on the paipai doing a fai kōrero at a pōwhiri and she felt like she had been welcomed into the forest with a pōwhiri and so she, she took that as an open door Yeah, another time there. Um, I was walking along just before dusk. It was sort of late afternoon, not quite getting dark. And I heard some small birds making a lot of noise, um, which is sometimes a sign that there's a predator around. And I looked up and there was a um, moorpork just sitting in one of the trees. And obviously, you know, it's not common to see them during the day, but I have seen them during the daytime up there a couple of times. And again, that's a good sign. If you've got a predator like that around, it means there's good habitat for the smaller birds that they will feed on, as well as the insects, which you know people don't really think of insects as being an important part of an ecosystem, but they are in terms of pollinating trees, breaking down um, dead wood and things like that. And in turn, they get eaten by other birds, um, such as kaka who will pull the bark off the tree to get at the insects underneath.
So we plant a lot of the forest giant trees such as Totara, Rimu, Kahikatea, Matai and Mero. Um, they're growing from seed collected from trees in the few forest remnants around the city, um, you know, as far as across to Eastbourne on the other side of the harbour or Lower Hut. Um, wherever we can source seed from old trees and as as our plantings have progressed we've made sure that we've put in um, a reasonable amount of these forest giant trees because they will eventually make up a large chunk of the forest canopy and what, what are called emergent trees you know that come up through the canopy um, generally, most of them need a fair bit of shelter when they're small, especially kahikatea. If you plant it out in the open, there's a good chance it'll die. I mean, it doesn't like too much sunlight. So we've been planting them for the last 20 years. They do take decades to get to any, even 10 metres as big for, you know, for a tree that's only 50 years old or something. Um, and usually takes a few decades for them to start forming fruit. Once they start forming fruit, that um, in turn brings in the birds because the birds, you know, a single kahikatea can provide something like 80 kilograms of fruit, I think, in a good year. So it, they become a really important part of the ecosystem. And in turn, having those big trees allows a higher density of birds. Lots of those large trees, martai, kahikatea, and that will live anywhere from 700 years to well over a thousand years. So we know that what we're doing is going to have a lasting impact on the city. Things that we're planting now, unless the land was cleared, will you know still be there in 500 years, 1,000 years' time. I would see gorse, I would see just heaps and heaps of gorse when I was a kid. And it's a completely different forest now than it was back then. And it is, it is like um, amazing. But in the timeline of a, a great grand forest, it's, it's still a baby. It's a baby forest and it has um, saplings and short trees and you won't walk through the forest and see the giants that we hear about, the forest giants, but the point is, is that someone will. That was the whole point. <laughs>